Okay, I want to say a word about age division players. And uh, actually, experienced players might be a better word than age division. And we have here Tom and Karen with us, and both play in age division players, and both are excellent players. And we're going to be looking at some of the things about age division. I'm going to be asking them some training questions because they're both experts. They both play at the national level. The other thing I'm interested in is what they do on their serves because you just saw uh, earlier we had some of the top pros in here hitting serves and then when you move to the age division you aren't going to overpower people what you have to do is outsmart them and there's certain little tricks extremely important for age athletes and not just women men too we have to lift if you stop lifting you really compound injuries and other things are going to happen none of them good if you were playing like Tom, and rather than trying to beat Tom, you would try to stay within yourself and play your own game. Is that fair? Okay, now we call this, or at least I call this, par racquetball. You're playing par. You're not trying to break par. The top golfers in the world know this. They don't go out and try to break par, they try to stay at par. And that's what we need to do, and the greatest upsets happen, not when you play out of your mind, but when you stay within yourself and play steady. Okay, Nick Lob. All right, now she's got the Nick Lob. Now, notice the Nick Lob. Tom is in here and he's got to take this ball up in here. Even though Tom's a real good player, he's forced to kind of play out of his comfort zone a little bit. There you go. That's the idea. Karen's philosophy is I'm not going to try to overpower people, I'm going to keep the ball up chest high if I can give them different angles and different speeds. It's 80% less effort to hit a lob serve than it is to hit a drive serve. I don't know if you knew that, but now you do. But Tom is going to do it a little differently. He's not going to use a lot of effort to hit his drive serve, am I correct? But he's going to say to us basically, look, I want you on defense right away. I want you to fear my serve. Am I correct? That's right. Because and, and I got to give credit on to uh, a guy who's won many national champions named Tom Travers, who first taught me, I thought I knew a lot about racquetball, I've been teaching for years, and this guy comes along and says, the two worst words in racquetball are nice rally. There should be no rally. You should hit an ace on the serve. I don't know if I totally agree with that, but if you have that mentality, you're going to get a lot of aces. All right, now Tom, Tom goes cross court and it looks like he's going down the left wall. Well, let's try it again. All right, now that time he went down the right wall. And we'll look at the mechanics of this. What Tom is doing is he's hitting the ball inside out at this angle, following through up, and the ball goes back this way like a wounded quail. It doesn't go back nice and flat. It goes back with a lot of weird spin. Now, when you're, when you're receiving that serve, if you step to that serve up high, you're gonna hit it right into the floor. You have to get, the only prayer you have is to get really low and attack that thing. That's the way you have to attack that, which is why it's such an effective age division serve. All right, go ahead again, just hit one more. And Karen, see if you can get low and return it. All right, and it helps, it helps when it goes into the side wall. It, I liken this to a knuckleball, am I right? Are there days when it seems like you have control and days like you don't have control? It is just like throwing a knuckleball and it's a very, very effective age division serve. Now you can hit it with your forehand too, right? All right, so Tom's gonna show it to the right with his forehand. All right, now you see again, you're hitting inside out and Tom would tell you that wasn't one of his best ones. Do you move your target area over more when something like that happens? Now here's the kicker about this. Correct me if I'm wrong. When you get guys that are leaning and gals leaning so much this way and you hit a bad one, the ball comes in on their chest. It's an effective serve even when you don't mean it to be, right? Because it's an inside out serve. Now, let's talk about the deception. Go ahead like you're going to go to the right. Now Tom looks like he's going to the right. He can sneak this thing across to the left. Watch him. Go ahead. 
Now he sneaks it over there. And he didn't just push it over there, He's, he smacked it over there pretty hard so it doesn't come off the back wall. And that's what makes it pretty effective. Well, let me just show you a couple of, of other age division tricks. One is the walking serve. And you don't have to be an age division player to do this, is, is to walk across it and hit it behind you like this. And of course, if somebody's, you know, somebody's returning it, you walk and you hit it to the right the same way. Okay, Karen's right-handed. So instead of me walking forward where she can see the ball and hitting it across me like this, because she's right-handed, I'm going to walk differently. I'm gonna move this way and hit it behind me. Do you see it? Because she's right-handed. Now be a left-hander, Karen. Please be a left-hander. Now when Karen's a left-hander, if Karen's a left-hander and I move backwards, she can see the ball. So I'm gonna move forward against the left-hander. You see the difference? These are all tricks that you have to do as you get in the age divisions. So if Tom's receiving serve on the left, you're aiming for about where I'm standing, right? And you want the ball to come right here. And this forces the ball to kick off behind Karen. It's called a wide angle pass. And it's really used effectively at all levels. There's not that much difference between cross court and down the line. And people begin to think that cross court's over here or down the line is right here. And either one of those places, you're gonna hit the side wall, which brings the ball in the center court. And the difference between playing Karen and Tom or a B player or C player is when you play these two, the ball's not in the center of the court. They keep the ball out of the center of the court. A one wall shot is higher percentage than a two wall shot. If it's not a perfect shot and you leave it up, it's in the center of the court. So a one wall shot is higher percentage than a two wall shot. All right. The hardest offensive shot to execute is probably the kill shot. Number two would be down the line, for sure. Down the line is the second hardest shot. The easiest offensive shot is cross court. Now, because Karen is serving, she wants to cut off the, easy, the hardest shot down the line for her to cover. She's making Tom go cross court. When Tom goes cross court, Karen has more time to get to the ball if he goes cross court. And that's the whole idea of playing your position this way. Okay, now, let's play it differently now. Let's say, Karen, uh, Tom's in the back, and you've got a shot, and you're up front. He's right about where he is right now. Go ahead, you're in the front, and you got a forehand. What, what are you gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? Right, she's gonna hit a pinch. Now, why don't you go ahead and execute a pinch so everybody can see that. And what she's gonna do is hit the side wall. Now, wait a minute. I said sidewall shots are lower percentage, but they're not lower percentage if your opponent's way out of position in the back court. He's got a long way to go. If she hits a one wall shot, Tom can at least has a chance to get to it. With a two wall shot, he has no chance. Now, let's, let's talk about the shot selection a different way. Let's think about hitting to the brown and keeping your body between your opponent and the ball. So when Tom's back here, uh, she pinches the right side. That's the shortest distance for her. Why wouldn't you pinch this side over here? Furthest distance. Furthest distance, hardest shot to hit, reverse pinch. Not a good shot to hit. The ball's on this side, this corner. Ball's on the other side, turn around, backhand. And Karen's gonna go what corner? That corner. And it's actually a better shot with Tom there because the ball's gonna rebound away from Tom and her body's gonna be between Tom and the ball. The thing about shot selection is you wanna have leverage on your partner or on your opponent. So when she's here, she's got leverage on him. She's got her body between him and the ball. That's the whole idea of shot selection. Now, a word about balls into the back wall. Karen gets caught in the back court and she hits the ball off the back wall. What do you do? I knew it. I, I haven't seen him play in so long and I knew he'd do that. 
because he's a good player. Now this is called cutting the ball off. And what's going to happen is Kara's going to hit the ball at the back wall. Tom's going to move up and cut it off in the front court. The reason he's going to do that is because if he waits for the ball to come back, now he has to hit a perfect shot. All right? Let's do it both ways. Let's let for the ball come back first. All right, Karen hit the ball into the back wall. All right, now move into position, Karen. Karen moves back. Now see, Tom has to hit a perfect shot, which he did, but Karen's making him hit a perfect shot. Now Tom's gonna move up on that same ball, and he doesn't have to hit a perfect shot because Karen's still in the back court. All right, same shot. Tom moves up, and there it is. And it didn't even have to be perfect because she was way back here. And that's what we mean by cutting balls off. And again, we go back to the coach and the clipboard. You're in the backcourt and you're looking. And when you find somebody that doesn't cut balls off, that gives your player an advantage.